What's going on, guys? Becky, your family is here because they all love you and they want to have a conversation with you about something important. Okay. It's about your addiction to thrifting. <sighs> Are you serious? Oh, okay. Well, how about Lucy? Can you share with us how your mother's thrifting has had an effect on your life? Okay, Mom, I just want to sleep in my bed. What are you talking about? I give you enough space on the bed? Yeah, but most of my friends get to use their entire bed. I think Levi would like to share his thoughts as well. Go ahead. Sometimes his clothes are scary. Help me, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me! Listen, you know how much I love having no space in my own house and washing stains out of other people's clothes. And you know how much I've enjoyed getting to know our mailman. Okay, hold on, he just texted me. And stimulating the economy, and you're right. I am getting used to that thrift store smell, or as you like to call it, our children's college fund, but enough is enough. Okay, I, I don't get it. What are you guys trying to say? Won't nobody love you the way they should. Won't nobody check up on you, make sure you're good. Won't nobody check those body tendons by your neck. All My name is Becky, and I'm a thriftaholic. What does that even mean, you ask? Let me show you. So when we're talking about things that need to get listed, here we go, here's the official tour. This is stuff in the playroom that has to get listed. So you can see there's like this little rack. There are these two bigger racks. And this one right here doesn't have as much stuff on it, but I mean, it's got some stuff. Um, this rack, if you saw in my last vlog, and I'll link that video, you saw that this rack had broken. So this is a brand new one from Amazon. Um, it's a lot better. And underneath are all pants that need to be steamed too. So these are just like super wrinkled things. And then back here we have things like pants. That's like a whole pile of pants and shorts and that sort of thing that needs to get listed. Over there are tops. There's like one random bag in there. And then I also have, if you look over here, um, I actually emptied out that bin, which is great. It had like summer clothes in it. And now I have a bin full of like winter clothes. Sorry, you can hear the kids, but I have like winter wear. And so I'm just leaving that stuff for next fall because I have so much like spring and summer type stuff, as you can see, because I was saving some of that too. Let's go to the next room with stuff that needs to get listed. If you've ever seen footage of this room before, you're probably thinking to yourself, oh my gosh, like that's really not that bad. So there's like two boxes of shoes here. There are some boots. There's like a random bag of stuff that my mother-in-law brought from, um, I think like her place or her sister-in-law's place, stuff that is probably like vintage, antique, that sort of thing that I have to go through. We got some hats. We've got a bunch of shoes and different things that need to get listed here. There's a bag there too. But there's also stuff in this crazy closet. Like I can't even show you everything, but you can see like boxes and boxes. Um, the clothes that are hanging, that stuff is already listed and most of it is going into eBliss soon. But um, it is like just never ending. So that really dark box right there of like black stuff, those are shoes that need to get listed. Um, and then all these boxes of kids clothes, I just have to decide like if I'm gonna list it, if I'm just gonna send it into kids consignment, but I gotta get this taken care of because there's a lot of stuff. And then this final bag of stuff that needs to get listed is from a local consignment store. I think everything in here is like a buck a piece or something like that, but I don't know, there's some great stuff in here. I just have not gotten around to listing it yet. So I gotta pull that stuff out. A lot of it is probably like winter wear, like sweaters and stuff that I can save for the fall and winter, but a lot of it is great summer pieces that now probably need to be steamed because they're so wrinkled. And then I do have this stuff that has been steamed and just needs to get photographed right there. I don't have the heart to sit down and count how many pieces of clothing or how many pairs of shoes or how many accessories are sitting in my house right now waiting to be photographed and listed. Let's just say it's a lot. If I had to guess, a conservative guess would be around 500 pieces. That's conservative, okay? Because I'm pretty sure it's more than that. It's a lot of stuff. So some of you might be asking yourself, especially if this is your first time visiting my channel, 
why do you even have all that stuff in your house? My name is Becky Park. I'm a part-time reseller. And by reselling, what I mean is I like to go thrifting or sourcing at different places like thrift stores. I go to consignment stores. Sometimes I go to actual stores like retail stores and pick up things that are on clearance. And I try to buy things for as cheap as I possibly can. And I try to sell them on reselling platforms such as Poshmark, eBay, Mercari. There are a bunch of other ones and I make pretty good money doing it. The problem is I think most resellers can definitely attest to the fact that the sourcing part of reselling, going out and finding the stuff is the most fun part and it's the most addicting part. The problem is once you bring that stuff home, it doesn't actually make you any money sitting in those piles, in your closet, in your children's playroom, in your wherever. You have to actually list all of that stuff in order to make money off of it. And this is where you'll notice that something seems off in that I seem to be going out and sourcing quite often, but there isn't as much time being dedicated to listing. I do feel like I'm actually pretty good at being consistent about my listing. Generally, I will list and cross list 10 items per day. However, I feel like there are enough items for me to list if I keep moving at that pace of 10 items a day to keep me occupied for many months. So I'm gonna do something about it. And if you heard me talk about being a thriftaholic and saw my money piles, as some of you like to call them, really they're death piles. Like you saw my child almost got lost in one of those piles of clothes. Help me, help me. But if you can relate to having all this stuff sitting around that just needs to get listed, then maybe we can help each other out. If you enjoy reseller content like this, I would really appreciate it if you wouldn't mind hitting that that subscribe button and if you want to learn how we can get rid of our death piles together go ahead and hit that like button and let's get into it so plain and simple I have decided that I am NOT going to go sourcing again until I sell 500 items and you might be thinking to yourself that's insane. It is insane. It, it actually is pretty insane. I will say that I average around 40 to 48 items sold a week. And so if I continue on that trend, it shouldn't take that long. It should be about three months of not sourcing, which actually feels horribly long because you all know if you are resellers as well, that garage sale season is coming up. And I did not go garage sailing once last summer because of Corona and I was too scared to go out there and do it. And so I feel extra <laughs> like excited about garage sale season this year. So what that's going to do for me is really light a fire under my butt to get stuff listed, to be consistent with my listing and cross listing. And by doing so, hopefully I can up my average number of items sold per week from 40 to 48 to maybe over 50. And if that's the case, then I can perhaps hit that 500 sold listings goal faster than if I were moving at the current rate that I'm moving right now. I also have really bad influences in my life. I'm talking about you, Chiwan. <laughs> like friends who are always like, let's go sourcing. Oh my God, there's this big sale at this store. There, you know, and I'm just like, oh my God, like I need you to stop telling me these things because I don't have the self-control. This is going to be difficult for a number of reasons. But one thing that I'm hoping to do to help keep myself accountable and motivated is to open this up to you guys as well. Last summer, I started something called the Summer Listing Challenge. And I actually have a Facebook group of over 500 people, of people who participated in last summer's Summer Listing Challenge. And that was just where, you know, we set a goal for ourselves for a week to list a certain number of items. And there were prizes and, you know, live streams on YouTube and different things that I did to, again, just kind of help keep people motivated. I definitely don't have the time or the energy to do things to that full extent the way that I did last summer with you know the big hoopla surrounding that challenge. But what I will do is open up that Facebook group and I'll have it linked in the description below so that if you want to you know have a community of people around you who are trying to keep you motivated and accountable to you know keeping to your goal, hopefully that group can do it for you. And I'll try to have some prizes and whatnot, but one one thing I want you to do is think to yourself of a goal that you can set for yourself. It doesn't have to be that you're not going to go sourcing again until you sell 500 items the same way that I'm going to do it. Perhaps it's you're not going to go sourcing again until you list a certain number of items or perhaps, you know, you want to create a similar goal to mine as far as not 
not allowing yourself to go out sourcing until you sell X number of items. But perhaps for you, that magic number will not be 500, but maybe it'll be 50 or maybe it'll be 100, depending on how long you've been reselling and how many active listings you have right now on your various platforms. For myself, one other thing that I'm going to try to focus on during this time is kind of revamping how I list and cross list. And what I mean by that is this. Right now, I list everything to Poshmark first, and then I cross list from Poshmark to all of the various platforms that I sell on. I know as a List Perfectly user that List Perfectly and other people who are like hardcore into List Perfectly, they really recommend that you list first into List Perfectly, into their database, and then push your listing out to the other platforms that you sell on. And the reason why they encourage that is because then if something sells on a platform, you can basically like hit a button on List Perfectly and it allows you to delete that listing from the other platforms really quickly. So I know that this is something I should be doing, but it, it just is something that I haven't done yet. So I feel like maybe what I want to do is starting with new listings instead of trying to go back in with all of my old listings, because I have over 800 active listings with any new listings that I create, which there should be a ton of. My goal is going to be to go into List Perfectly first. And also, if you watch this video right here, it's an interview that I did with a couple who runs a company called eBliss. And what they do is they act as like the Amazon FBA for resellers. So in theory, you source, you ship them everything that you source, and they store and ship it out for you. As you can see, I have a ton of shoes and stuff behind me, but I am slowly in the process of sending them. The majority of my items and the items that I don't send them, I'm actually going to put into a second eBay store or like a second Poshmark store. And those second stores will be kind of my lower priced items. And hopefully by doing so, there isn't as much in my closet or eBay store for people to kind of get lost in. And it makes it easier for people to bundle items. I don't know, I'm gonna try it and just see what happens. Maybe I'll hate having two different eBay stores and two Poshmark closets to manage. Maybe it'll work out really well for me. But one thing I know is that I want to free up some space and I want to free up some time. And so I am sending the majority of my stuff over to eBliss. And so one thing that I can do too is as I list things into List Perfectly first, I can put in my eBliss SKU number for that particular item. And I can keep track of which items are with me, which items are with eBliss, which item is in which, you know, eBay store, Poshmark store, all that kind of stuff. And I think it'll be good to just have a central place where all of that information is organized. For those reasons, I'm really excited actually about not sourcing anymore because it will save a lot of time in my weekly schedule to not be out you know, at the thrift store or at consignment stores, but to just spend that time at home listing what I have. So I don't know who needed to hear this. I don't know who else needs to go on a sourcing freeze. If that's you, then I invite you to finally tackle that death pile, that money pile, whatever it might be, and spend that time that you would have spent sourcing saying listing the items that you already have at home. And I bet you have some amazing things at home already. So accept the challenge to list what you have at home with me. Let's see if we can make some amazing money without spending more money on sourcing. I'm excited to hear what happens for you guys. So like I said, if you want to go on this journey with me, go ahead and join the Facebook group down below. There's already a group of wonderful people in there. So the weekly schedule that I'm going to set up for myself is I'm only going to photograph on two days. Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, I have to actually go to school and be in the building. Even though I'm not teaching the whole time, it's kind of ridiculous because we have to go to school even though we're doing, you know, remote learning on the computer, but they're making us go to school which is fine. But on Wednesdays, we don't go to school so that they can do like a deep clean of our school. So on Wednesday mornings, what I want to do before I go to school for rehearsal is when I'm not teaching, because there's usually at least an hour that I'm not teaching, I want to spend that hour photographing as much clothes as I possibly can. And then I want to have one evening a week where I photograph shoes in my light box, shoes and accessories, because I have a ton of shoes and accessories. I don't need good lighting for that. All I need is my light box and so I can do that in the evening. So one evening after my children go to sleep, I want to commit to photographing shoes and accessories and hopefully photographing those two times throughout the week will give me pictures of enough items so that I can do at the very least 10 listings a day and you know, cross listing 10 items a day. That's what I've been doing but hopefully even more. So I think what I want to try and do is shoot for 15 new listings and 15 items that get cross listed. 
We'll see if I can do that. Um, but you know, I'll be okay with 10 as well. So my schedule is to photograph those two days, have things photographed and ready to list throughout the week. And we'll see if we can knock out more listings than usual and get through this death pile as quickly as possible. So that's my plan of attack. And like I said, I will be sharing my journey in that Facebook group. I will be sharing it obviously on my YouTube channel. I'll keep you guys posted on how many items I've sold and how close I am to my goal. And you'll be able to see too from my what sold videos if the amount that I'm earning per week goes up because of this challenge that I've created for myself. I don't know where you're at. I don't know if you need something like this in your own life as well, but regardless, hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much for watching with me and for being a part of this journey with me and hopefully for keeping me accountable. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.